Okay, so here's what we're doing. All right, I'm going to explain the process. I do not care. What we're going to do today, we're going to try and change you for some baby formula and some actual solid foods, okay? No, we're doing baby food, not solid food. Baby Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. What I'm doing is you all felt overwhelmed with Prop Bob. The reason for that is Prop Bob is confusing. There's a lot of steps to it. But here's the aspect and part that matters. It's just steps. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking the steps individually so you do the steps. You have no idea what you are doing at Prop Bob, but you're doing it in pieces. So that what happens is, is when it's all said and done, by next week we've already joined all these pieces together and you guys are solving problem balls. And then I get to go in the leadership meeting and I get to brag about, yeah, that Kim class is of mine, balling out. Okay. So, here we go. We'll start on these. If you are not getting these yet, guess what? That's okay. It's all good. Don't freak out. Don't worry about it. It's practice. We're working. Here's the important aspect that you need to know. Do not, I repeat, do not just sit there and struggle. Ask for help. If you don't understand something, ask about it. So, we look at the first question on the issue set. I ask you to determine how many moles are in a 8.45 gram sample of potassium. So the first thing you really need to do is get you a little plan together. So a plan is going to be where am I starting at? How do you figure out where you're starting at? Go to the number. Look at the unit with the number. I have grams. What's that a unit of? Mass. mass. <coughs> okay. So I'm starting at mass. Now what is the question asking you to find? Determine how many Moles. So I'm trying to go to moles. Can you go straight from mass to moles? Yes. Yeah. We can go straight from mass to moles. So we're good to do that. Then what we're going to do, we'll take our number, 8.45 grams. Set it over 1. And this is potassium. This chemical symbol is K. Do you have to put the K in there? No. You don't even really technically have to put the grams in there, but I do it because I let my units help me catch my mistakes. So, notice no unit here with this one. I can't stress it enough. But now i got to get to moles, so I need a conversion factor. So you have two options. Option one, if you're a visual person, mole mat. You look at your mole mat, you go to mass, you follow the arrow that goes to moles, there's a conversion factor. One mole over blank grams. So you set this up. Or you can look at it how I like to do it and say, where am I going? I'm going to moles. Moles go on the top. So one mole, potassium. <coughs> Iris, talk to me. Quick, quick, get my seat. On the bottom. I'm leaving grams, so grams of potassium. Could you stop? I'm not even doing anything, she's just been a drama queen. No, it's a unusual. <coughs> oh my gosh. I love how much love y'all have for each other. That's the greatest. We actually love each other so much. No, she doesn't love each So, what number is going to go here with the grams? <laughs> so the average atomic mass, 39.10, do what you're going to do, I'll set the calculator. Don't you do it for like that, can't you just like, are you done? Hey, just ignore her. Yeah, I know, she's like. Uh, okay. like, you just, just, <laughs> I'm trying to talk. Not even just speaking. Talk. Just, like, just talk. I can feel you looking at me. Okay. Okay. Jody, ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> she just survived like 
Uh, if you're going from mass to mo, can you just divide 8.45 divided by the atomic mass of that and just get the answer? Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so grams of potassium cancel out leaves me with moles of potassium. You push that in the calculator and what you get is 0 0.2161 moles of potassium. Yeah. I do want to take this time to say something, okay, because a couple of people yesterday uh, on what I had you do on the back of your entry slip, I looked at them, and there was a couple of little mistakes. One I want to stress is if the numbers in the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, you divide by it. If it's in the top, you'll multiply by it. So in this case, we divided by the 39.10. All right, and we'll go through this a little more. So this is mass to moles. You also can go from moles to mass, which is what the second one is. Determine the mass of a 1.47 mole sample of arsenic. So where are we starting? Look at the number, look at the unit. Where do we start? Thank you. You're going to start a mole. Where are you going? Mass. Go to mass. What unit should I be left with? Grams. So, set it up. I got number 1.47 moles of arsenic. I heard somebody addressing it. If this is confusing you when I put the Z here, all that is is atomic number. And that 33 is telling you the atomic number of arsenic, so you can find it on the periodic table. That's all it's there for. So we set it over to 1. What unit goes here for 1? Nothing. Nothing. Thank you. Nothing goes here. Just the number 1. Okay? You remember, he was number one. Okay. <coughs> oh, not a SpongeBob fan? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch that. Of course you was. That's the problem. <laughs> I was until Brian was born and then she decided to play. All right, so, can I go straight from moles to mass? Yeah. Yes. yes. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mass, so what goes in the top? Well, one of the conversion factors. One mole. No, no. 72.9. Oh, I don't know. Dust it. Yeah, I wasn't looking at it. You say 9.2 because my periodic table is missing. 7.9. I actually did it right, I just said it wrong. So I'm not stupid, I promise. It's right on my paper. Alright, in the front, in the top goes grams of arsenic. What goes on the bottom? One of arsenic. So moles of arsenic cancel, leaves me with grams of arsenic. So this is the point where I was talking about. This number is in the top, so I will multiply by it. And we will get... 1, 3, 2, 4 grams of arsenic. Questions on these? Okay, here's what we're doing is I'm breaking this thing down simple in the steps. If you go back to Prop Bob, you will see I went from mass to moles. Now what we're going to do next is here, we're doing with the other portion of the map, we're going from moles to atoms, particles, molecules, and formula units, and from atoms, particles, molecules, and formula units, back to mole. So you're going to do each one of these. These are like the foundation for you to know how and what to do. There is a piece of information I want to add here. When I went from moles to mass, or I go from moles to if I go from mass to moles, or moles to mass, there's a piece of information that I need. 
you have to have a periodic table. Now, because there is a rumor going around that Mr. Hall is evil and mean and a horrible person, I want to address this. Every quiz you have for me, except for the element quiz, I will give you a periodic table. So every quiz you literally will be given a periodic table. So the information will be there. You don't have to memorize it. Next up. Whenever you're dealing with atoms, particles, uh, molecules, and formula units, there is a special number you will need. I introduced the number to you. You may not necessarily remember the name or be able to pronounce the name. Some kids struggle with it. But Avogadro's number. Some kids like to call it Avocado because it's just easier apparently. I think it's funny. So go right ahead. What is Avogadro's number? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Now the units there could be atoms, molecules, particles, and formula units. Either way. You look at the question, the question will either give you the unit or I'm giving you the unit I want you to find. So in this case, when you look at this, how many moles are in 2.6 times 10 to the 24th molecules of carbon dioxide. So when we look at this, where am I starting? Molecules. Where am I going? Moles. Now, these are the easiest ones. Jody, yes. I go ahead and answer your question you're going to ask me in four minutes. Okay. Yes. How many moles are in 2.6 times 10 to the 24th molecules of carbon dioxide? So we take our number, because I can go straight from molecules to moles. So we set it up. 2.6 times 10 to the 24th molecules of CO2. So number one. I need a conversion factor. So what unit goes on top? One mole. Why are you saying one mole on top? Because you're going to mole. I'm going two moles. So the moles are going to go on top. What's going to go on the bottom? Avocado. Okay. Avocado. Avocado. Number. Six point zero two two times ten. 23rd, and the unit is? Yes. The reason I do that is because you got to be able to read the calculator. Kids don't put the times 10 thing because they don't understand that E takes place at the times 10. So if you put this in your calculator, this one's not going to leave you with a big X program. But the next one we do with. Mr. Hall. Yeah. How do you do the A here? Go second function <coughs> and then the comma right above the 7. So you do 2.6 E 24.
Make sure to hit this negative down here. Don't hit subtract. Hit the actual negative. Then yeah, I close my parentheses. I hit divide, and then I type in 6.022. Second. I thought you were going to say. Thus, we get this. Okay. Oh, really? Stop. Now, do you have to put the parentheses? No. You don't have to, but I, I like to. You don't have to, but in some cases, you type things in the calculator, the calculator may misread it. Yeah, I got it. So if you put parentheses in, it keeps it from misreading. Beautiful little trick. All right. We get 4.3175 moles of carbon dioxide. Which then brings me... To one of Mr. Hall's favorite things. This one. Yeah. So that is going to be a big one. Oh, you like it too. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. In his question, it asks how many molecules are in a 7.8 mole sample of oxygen. So, <coughs> cool. we're starting at mole. We're going to molecules. And here's the reason as to why. So 7.8 moles of O2. And I said it over one. Now I'm going to answer the question you had. Why did I put O2? Everything else, element-wise, has been just a chemical symbol. 
Why is there a two? One of the two options you have. There is, but there's something special about it. This is one of my mad daddy tricks. I keep it in my back pocket always, and I pull it out just whenever I need a good little tricky trick to trick you. The fact that I put the word oxygen changes this. And here's the reason why. There are some things called the seven diatoms. Now, what the seven diatomics are, the key is di, which means two, atomics, which means two <laughs> atoms. The seven diatomics exist in nature bonded to themselves. So when you talk of oxygen, you're not talking O, you're talking O2. And there's a reason for this. They are joined in nature, bonded to themselves. So anytime you find it, it will be joined with itself. There are seven. Hydrogen, H2. Nitrogen, N2. Oxygen, O2. Mm -hmm. Carbon. Chlorine. Carbon dioxide. Chlorine. Bromine and iodine. H2N2O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I want to stress something to you. That second letter, that is a lowercase l. That is not an I. Now, with it being a trick, as much as I like to, I give you a trick to my trick. On your periodic table, you're going to get it out if you haven't got it out already. And Mr. Hall's going to show you the trick. Because how many of you really want to memorize all seven of those and have to keep that in your memory for the whole entire year? Because once you learn it, all is fair game, so do not forget it. There is a trick. Hydrogen's by itself. So hydrogen is the one that's kind of hard to remember. So hydrogen is by itself. But then the other six make a seven on the periodic table starting at seven. So you go to tonk number seven is nitrogen, you make a seven. Oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. That is the trick to remembering the trick. I know what you're wondering. Why in the world does that matter? So that you put O2? No. This is the reason it matters. If you're dealing with the mass, or you're dealing with going to mass, on the periodic table, you see nitrogen's average atomic mass is 14.01. That's for one nitrogen atom. If you have a mole of the diatomic nitrogen, you have to double it. So if it's by itself, and you're dealing with the average atomic mass of it, you will have to double the average atomic mass off your periodic table. In this case, we are going moles to molecules. Do I need the periodic table? No. no. So I don't have to worry about that right now. Do you think you're going to have to worry about this later on? Yes. Yes. Well, yes, yes you will. You're so welcome. <laughs> Mr. Hall is here to prepare you for college. Stop. See you at the graphics lab. All right. <laughs> <coughs> now, let's get to this. 
All right, so I'm going to molecules. So I set up conversion factor. So 7.8 <laughs> moles of O2 over 1. Set up conversion factor. What unit goes in the top? Uh, avocado. Uh, avocado. Guys, thanks. Well, what? Avocado. Come on. I don't know. Come on. RC, we got this. Okay, so you got you got the number right. Molecules are two. How do you pronounce the name? Avogadros. But you need the units, molecules. Ashwagandha. O two. What goes on the bottom? One mole. One mole. Ashwagandha. Here's the reason why I like doing this. Is if you look at it. I got moles of O2 on the top, moles of O2 on the bottom, moles of O2 cancel. What units am I left with? Molecules of O2. Really? So you toss Stop. that in the calculator. In this case, it's going to matter how you type this in because it's going to give you a big exponent. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. How many of you get this? Look closely. That's what I got. But it rounded. Right. That's what I got. Look closely. No. You didn't add the exponent of those. Yeah. This is why I do what I do with you guys on the calculator. Look on your number and you see the E, 24 at the end. That E takes place at times 10. That's what the calculator is telling you. This hasn't mattered to you because you haven't dealt with such large numbers before. So your calculator hasn't given you anything in this representation before. But now these numbers are so big. This rounds up to the six Hey, I want to throw this out too because the 4.69716 in your calculator, the 6 does round the 1 up to a 2. If you put a 1 here instead of a 2, I'm going to count it right. I'm not grading you on your rounding skills, I'm grading you on your mole conversions. Yeah. Do we always round with do we yeah, always four places. Do we do always four places? I like to go four places because it gives you enough uh, to where you can do something with it. But not like too much where. Yeah. Flip here. Now we're flipping the script. Determine the number of molecules in a 1.65 mole sample of methane, which is CH4. Question to you. Where am I starting you? I'm starting in moles. Hey, how'd you know that? Because it's asking us to determine the number of molecules in a 6.5 mole sample. Mole sample. Look at the number. What units with the number? So we're starting at moles. Where am I going to? Molecules. Molecules. And you know that because <coughs> I asked you for it. Atoms, particles, molecules, and formula units are confusing to you because you get locked in on what unit to use. I either give it to you or I ask you for it. It's the simplest of them. So I go to molecule. Whenever you're going from moles to molecules, you need a special number. What is the name of the special number? Uh, Avogadro. Avogadro. I can't say that, yeah. It's okay. Avogadro's number. Some kids like to call it Avocado's number, which I thought was funny. I laugh. So what is Avogadro's number? 6.022 times 10 to the third. And in this case, what unit's going to go with it? Molecules. Molecules. <coughs> I 
All right? So let's set this baby up. Take the number you're given. Set it over one. So I have 1.65 moles of methane over one. What unit goes here at the bottom with the one? Nothing. Nothing. You're okay. I'll oh, right. you. We're not to put the unit I tricked you. Yeah, I tricked you. You're okay. There's no unit on the bottom. I stress that because every year I have students that want to do that. So I'm trying to stress it this year. When you first do it, nothing goes down there. Now, set up the conversion factor. Can I go straight from moles to molecules? Yeah. Yes. So where am I going? Molecules. molecules. So what unit goes in the top? Molecules. Molecules. <coughs> so molecules of methane. What number goes with molecules? The NA number? Avocado, the NA number. Yeah, I'm not about to try to say that. Oh man, how did I get mixed up? I changed the wrong color. Dang it. What goes on the bottom of the conversion factor? One mole. One mole. Of CH4. So what happens to moles of CH4? It cancels out. Cancels out. How do I know that? Look here, I got moles of CH4 in the top, moles of CH4 in the bottom. They cancel. So on this one, you have to type this in a calculator, but when you're going to type this in a calculator, there's a special way of doing this. I want to make sure you get it. This is one of those if you do not have a calculator, you're going to want to grab a calculator because you have to be able to type this into a calculator. We mess up all the time when we let you guys type scientific notation in a calculator wrong. And the reason this is a problem is because it points and shoots out information for you in a certain way. So we're going to make sure you guys get this. So I'm going to show you up here how to punch this in a calculator. Turn the light off just because I would like it to show up a little bit better than what it is. <coughs> All right. Here's what we're dealing with. dealing with is typing the number in. So the number I got on the board. So here's how I do this. So everybody's good with this part. So the 1.65. That's two. That's a two. Thanks. So 1.65 and am I multiplying or dividing? Multiplying. Multiplying is the same. Here's the difference. Type in 6.022 and stop. And you don't put in the whole part? What? I was thinking you don't put in the 
Ten. You do not put in the times ten and then go to the exponent key and throw an exponent in. These calculators are built to do it better for you. Here's what you need to do. you're going to do, you're going to go to the second function key, so the till key up here. Hit second. You should have an arrow in the box blinking. Then above the number seven, you see the comma? You know that thing that Mr. Hall never uses and you English people are like, oh my god, he needs a comma in the sentence. Yeah. yeah, that thing. Click that. So what you should have is a 6.022 with a capital E. Capital E, not lowercase e. If you got lowercase key, uh, lowercase e, you're doing natural logs. You don't want to do natural logs. E, the E takes place at the times 10. Now you just type your exponent in. So what's the exponent? 23. 23. So type 23 in. Close the parentheses. Why in the world did you do it that way, Mr. Hall? That's so complex. Hit enter. This right here is exactly the reason as to why I did this and why I spent the time with this. Tons of you will miss problems right and left because you do not know what this means on a calculator. The answer you get, the 9.9363 9 e to the 23, what's the e take place of? Times 10. So what this is is 9.9363 9 times 10 to the 23rd power. I know tons of kids that will give me that as my answer. Compare those numbers, 9.9363 9 compared to 9.9363 9 times 10 to the 23rd power. Big difference, right? Mm -hmm. This is why I cover this with you. You have to punch these numbers in the calculator properly. Other reason is kids make mistakes and it ends up hurting them. Please watch your eyes. Yeah. Please make sure you can punch that in the calculator properly. So when I did this, I got 9.9. Final answer is 9.9363 9 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methane. Any questions? If you decide that you want to type it in the other way, go ahead. I've seen kids mess the numbers up. Will you get the numbers correct nine times out of ten? Yes. If you do it correct. Other times, if you type something in the calculator wrong, the calculator reads something wrong, it shoots out a wrong number. I can only judge with what you put on the paper. All right, so that was mold to molecules. So now, next question. Determine how many moles are in a 6.42 times 10 to the 25 atoms of nitrogen. This is where things get fun for me. There is something special here. First, where am I starting? Moles. Starting. Oh, atoms. Um, How did you know I was starting at atoms? Number. Number. Unit. I'm starting at atoms. Where am I going? Moles. Moles. 
So we're gonna do everything the same here, then I'm gonna add a little tidbit information just because I feel like adding something fun to the class today. It's one of those days. So I'm starting at atoms, can I go straight from atoms to moles? Yes, so we're solid. So take my number, 6.42 times 10 to the 25 atoms of nitrogen. Interesting. Going to address something with you today. You don't notice it yet, but you best notice it for now on. There's an N2 here with just the element name. Every other one has just been the chemical symbol. K for potassium, AS for arsenic. Why all of a sudden is there a 2 on nitrogen? There is a trick of tricks I love to pull out. It's one of my favorite tricks. And you know how I told you about cubic centimeters is always a trick I keep in my back pocket? <coughs> D7 is a trick that I always keep. They are a very special group that we call the seven diatoms. We speak of the seven diatomics, they are different. Diatomics refers to they exist in nature bonded to themselves. There is a trick to memorizing and figuring out the trick. I'm going to show it. You need a periodic table, which I've given you. Here are the seven. Hydrogen. Nitrogen. Oxygen. Fluorine. Chlorine. Bromine. And iodine. Some of you may call it iodine, but if you count, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven of these. Bless you. Bless you. I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. Once you head back, go up to your periodic table. How in the world are you going to know those? Are you going to memorize all seven of them? Gosh, man. Why in the world would you ever do that to yourself? Here's the trick. On your periodic table, there's one that sits by itself. is hydrogen. So hydrogen is the first one. But if you look on your periodic table, it's number one, it's at the very top left. So there's hydrogen. Then the other six make a seven at seven. Go to atomic number seven is nitrogen. So you go nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You make a seven on the periodic table. Why does this matter? Whenever you're dealing with the mass to moles or moles to mass, if you're dealing with a diatomic, you have to double the average atomic mass. Do I need to do that right now? No, I'm not dealing with mass. I'm just giving you a little tidbit of information to enlighten you and encourage you to be prepared. Okay. I really need two cameras and a switcher. Oh man, that'd be nice.
you are going to want to make sure that you know those seven, okay? So let's finish this problem. I'm starting at atoms. I'm trying to go to moles. Where am I going? Moles. So what goes on the top? One mole. What goes on the bottom? What number? Avocado. Avocado. I love it. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. What unit goes with it? Atoms. 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 N2. So atoms of N2 cancel. Leaves me with moles. So I'll throw that in the calculator. You need to throw this in a calculator. Do not assume that you can do this. It's going to suck if you end up messing this up on a quiz, because then it counts. Right now, it's not counting. So I get 106.6091 moles of nitrogen. Any questions? So, you got the, um, for the exponent on the, on the right side, on the bottom, you got 23 because you subtracted the two from the diatomics? Or? Nope, I got 23 because Avogadro's uh, number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Oh, so you just use, you use the one, the problem gives you on the left and then on the right, you use uh, the number. Yep. So, this is the easy part if you're going from moles to atoms, molecules, particles, or formula units, or if you're going from atoms, molecules, particles, formula units to moles. You pretty much are just multiplying by Avogadro's number or dividing by Avogadro's number. This is the simplest one because <coughs> it's literally that simple in this step. Multiply by Avogadro's number or divide by Avogadro's number. Okay?